Sergey. And uh, I didn't expect to have the privilege of uh, standing here before you uh, this evening, uh, but I was just uh, given that honor by Cheryl, and in fact, uh, she's requested that I sing a song. <laughs> But I'm told that torture is against the principles <laughs> of Ashoka. And, uh, and I guess, um, given all the great work and selfless acts that all of you do, I wouldn't want to condemn you in that way. Uh, so I just wanted to say uh, welcome to Google, and uh, it's a privilege to have you here. Uh, we've been uh, fairly fortunate the past few years, and uh, it's an honor that we're able to, uh, to host gatherings like these. program here. Obviously our entrepreneurial roots are right next to me, but this is a company that believes deeply in entrepreneurship, and this is a company that believes deeply in the power of information. We don't think there's any organization which combines those two things in a more compelling way than Ashoka. Through the Fellows Program, the genius of this organization is taking all the amazing contributions these people are making towards making the world a better place and bringing those to light and sharing those so that other people can learn, sharing the information of what they're doing. Ashoka then takes it to the next level with their programs like Mosaic, taking those individuals and helping them work together so that as a group, they're stronger than the individuals. We are honored to have you here tonight, and we salute the great work you've done to get you into this program. Congratulations to each of you. Instructions that we're not supposed to introduce the next person, and we have it easy because our, our next person needs no introduction. Um, we're well, please, intro, please welcome Anusha Ansari, who's been a role model for so many women worldwide. Well, it's wonderful to be here and uh, to share this evening with all of you. Uh, this is the second program I attended and by far one of the largest, so I'm very pleased to see the success of Ashoka in uh, getting more and more people aware of the wonderful work that the fellows do around the world. Um, entrepreneurs are change maker by nature and uh, they cannot help but try to solve a problem when they see one. But the, what makes them unique is the way they approach the problem. They don't just try to fix a problem, they look at it and analyze it and try to find the root cause. And after they find the root cause, then they try to find a solution that attacks the problem at its core and something that will introduce a sustainable, systematic change that will alleviate the problem, not only in their community but on a larger scale. And that's what's unique about Ashoka. Ashoka fellows are individuals who look at the world in that way. And uh, Ashoka has been able to successfully, globally identify these individuals and provide a network and a support organization that not only helps them individually, but gives them a network that allows them to uh, interact with each other, learn from each other, and to be able to expand their reach and introduce these changes on a much larger scale. Um, I was fortunate to be introduced to Ashoka through a book that's been sitting on your chairs called How to Change the World. And after reading the book, I got very excited and uh, I tried through the author to get to know Bill Drayton. And after talking to him and hearing his vision and what he foresees for entrepreneurs uh, in the future and the way they will make social changes in the world and make it a better place, I got fascinated with the organization and became one of the believers and supporters of the organization. And one of the best moments of my participation was actually being part of one of the selection uh, panels. Uh, I was invited to go and become an observer when uh, the fellows in um, Africa and Middle East were selected. So I went to Egypt and got to hear the stories of these wonderful, wonderful individuals that have come up with ways of making 
their community a better place to live for their local people and to be able to expand it and grow it to a much larger scale. So just getting to know them, hearing their stories has been a wonderful experience and I'm pleased to be part of this group of uh, individuals who support Ashoka and his fellows and I'm glad to be here tonight and celebrate tonight uh, with them. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce the next speaker, uh, a dear friend and also a fellow entrepreneur, Salar Hamonger. Thank you, Anisha. I too was introduced uh, first to Ashoka just a year or so ago, uh, also through David Bornstein's book. And um, a couple of messages really resonated with me and I want to share what those are. Um, and uh, since then I've gotten to know uh, Bill, uh, Susan Davis, and a few other folks from Ashoka better. And uh, one of the organizations I'm involved with, uh, uh, PARSA, uh, our very first grant that we made uh, since coming together was uh, 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 for an Ashoka fellow uh, of Iranian origin because we thought that one of the most important things we could do was to introduce um, this concept and this process uh, to a community that uh, for, uh, otherwise would not uh, be as aware. Um, so I, I too am delighted to be here. Uh, when I first read uh, this book, I had uh, kind of two aha moments. One was in learning about individuals and one was in uh, um, thinking about the way the way the organization is organized and is set to scale. And I saw a lot of parallels there with uh, the Scarf environment here in Silicon Valley and, and uh, in Google in particular. Uh, on the individual point, what impressed me was when you read through these stories, you see that uh, people are coming up with solutions that you could never anticipate ahead of time. Uh, you'd never have a government organization or company mandate and say, I'm going to fix clean water in country X by doing Y. And all these things uh, emerge from people who figure out what works within the environment, and, and then they make that happen. Um, and uh, this, I think, is also how uh, innovators, uh, entrepreneurs, make uh, disruptive changes. Uh, the second uh, was around the, uh, the uh, scalability of the model itself. And I think there's a lot of parallels with the Shoka and the way uh, uh, startups get organized and the way uh, Google works. Um, one key point is to mention the way you attack the problem. Um, we always have a temptation at Google to, uh, especially the managers, to kind of say, okay, we must, we mandate that these set of things must happen in the next year. And that uh, approach uh, works, especially in more mature product areas, but there's a whole range of uh, uh, products and innovations that uh, we know are going to be very different five years from now than they are uh, today, uh, but we don't know how they would be different. And uh, it would be, uh, it would not work for us to try to predict, predict those things. Uh, so instead, we try to um, uh, encourage small teams to come up with solutions. We, wish, we see which teams are working well, and we uh, make available more resources to those uh, small teams individuals, uh, and then we uh, step out of the way. And I think there's a lot of parallels there with the way Shoka uh, finds its fellows, the way it uh, recognizes them, but then gets out of the way. Uh, the other piece is that once we see that a team or a product has started succeeding, we've gotten to a certain point, we then look for commonalities between that product area and related product areas. Uh, and it's th then that we ask these teams to think about how they can work more closely together and uh, integrate what they're doing so that they bring the power of both products to each other's user bases. And I think the parallel there is very clear with uh, the Mosaic approach in Shoka, where um, the organization promotes group entrepreneurship. Once uh, you have individuals who are successful, um, you ask them to think about how to work together. And you don't do that ahead of time, because if you do that ahead of time, you slow things down too much. Um, so I think really the, the uh, parallels are, are very interesting, very compelling, and uh, is I think what is so appealing uh, about Ashoka and the model to myself and, and uh, my colleagues um, here. Um, the second thing I wanted to call out was uh, uh, just some of the uh, some innovations that are made possible for the internet, um, and uh, I think it can be very key uh, if leveraged correctly by the folks in this room. Let me just, uh, not, it's not a Google product pitch, but let me run through examples of products that I think really make a difference for uh, individuals in the developing world. One, of course, uh, is uh, mobile phones and you can do on mobile devices. Uh, it's very clear that the model of information access in developing countries will be through mobile devices, not through PCs or, or anything else. Um, 
Uh, so the more that we can do to make uh, information access work well on mobile devices, the more important that is. The second piece is trying to make sure that all the world's information is available on these devices. Uh, uh, and that includes things that are already on the web, as well as things that are not on the web, such as books, that we're trying to um, scan and make uh, more accessible. A uh, third uh, example is uh, a language barrier. Uh, lots of content is in English uh, and not in other languages. Uh, so we're working on automated lang language translation tools so that um, uh, users can access all content. I think we're up to close to 40 languages now uh, with automatic translations. Translations, of course, aren't perfect, uh, but, but they do the job. Um, and uh, finally, um, a lot of what we're trying to do make it possible for people to self-market themselves in a way that they couldn't before. Uh, before, if you wanted to advertise your initiative, your cause, your campaign, uh, you would um, uh, need to interact with a large sales organization, you go back and forth negotiating media agreements, um, and, uh, and then you're in a relationship where you don't know what the results will be. Uh, one, uh, one of our products, AdWords, makes it possible for people to very easily promote themselves, and there's other products like this offered by companies besides Google. And uh, another example is uh, Google Video or YouTube, uh, we're seeing more and more examples of how uh, really important piece of information comes to light and cause big uh, uh, changes in the way people think about things as a result of information that gets spread virally through uh, our uh, uh, video and, and the web. So uh, I just want to close with, with that and, uh, and uh, uh, I hope that uh, the folks in this room can think about uh, the development of uh, uh, online technologies like this and how they can leverage these things to increase information access and uh, promotion to the communities they work with. Uh, with that, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Ashoka uh, Senior Fellow, uh, Don Shabi. Good evening. In uh, Neil Simon's play, The Goodbye Girl, the lead character played the movie by Richard Dreyfuss says, there's only one thing worse than a hopeless romantic, and that's a hopeful one. <laughs> we are here tonight to celebrate 18 hopeless romantics. 18 individuals who are willing to change the world. Uh, I hope you'll join me tonight in watching a terrific video about the fellows before we introduce them, because these individuals change lives for a living. of social entrepreneurship around the world and to shape the citizen sector that is entrepreneurial, productive, and globally integrated. The key to a show of success is our ability to find only the highest quality social entrepreneurs with the most powerful new ideas. And our rigorous selection process is the cornerstone. Ashoka Fellows are exemplary in every way. Their programs are as varied as they are. They come from all over the continent, from every walk of life, addressing some of society's toughest challenges. But the abilities they share change lives, communities, and societies. systems so that you can achieve all that they dare to dream.
and resources to those who fight for us. Thank you. 
protect our precious resources and preserve our cultural heritage for future generations. of a world free from bias, so we can build our future together. And tap into our greatest human potential. At this uh, season of Thanksgiving, who better to give thanks and celebration than the 18 North American Ashoka Fellows? I'd like to ask the directors of Ashoka's North American program to join me. Andres Dusan from Canada. Armando Morde from Mexico, Barbara Kasdan and Travian Shorters from the United States. Like Ashoka Fellows, each of these individuals creates a special entrepreneur. In my work, I um, have the privilege of doing high school graduations for youngsters who will be the first in their families to go on to college. In addition to that, I was a TV kid, so I always grew up with the belief that someday I wanted to be Bob Barker and host The Price is Right. But this is even better, because this is about the work that is right. And that's who we're here to celebrate tonight. I am honored to welcome the 18 new North American fellows. Let's give uh, a great cheer to Rafael Alvarez of Genesis Works from Houston. Dale Bell. Dale, through the Media and Policy Center Foundation, is offering citizens the power of media to celebrate and inspire social change. Dale Hales from Los Angeles. Charles Best, coming to us from New York City. 
Charles, through Donors Change, is connecting online donors with enterprising teachers to meet classroom needs. Charles, thank you. Toledo, <laughs> Ohio is home to Tyrone Bledsoe. Tyrone created the Student African American Brotherhood, a nationwide brotherhood of students committed to lifelong leadership and service. Tyrone. Where's Ron Chisholm from New Orleans, Louisiana? Ron is recognizing and undoing individual and institutional racism through the People's Institute for Survival and Beyond. Ron, thank you. Stephen Clip from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Stephen builds community online to strengthen local democracy and broaden political debate through edemocracy.org. Thank you, Stephen. Charlotte Frank from New York City, leading the way for women who reshape the workforce to reshape retirement. Her organization is the Transition Network. Charlotte, thank you. Margarita Griesbach could not be with us tonight. Margarita founded the Officina, which uses the law to make judicial systems work for the benefits of its victims. Margarita works out of Mexico City. Let's give her a round of applause. Join me in welcoming Nancy Henkin of Communities for All Ages, weaving generations together to capture the rich social fabric of communities. Nancy's from my hometown, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Worked on a pronunciation for the last hour. Gilles Julian. Great picture of you on your bicycle. Based in Montreal, Gilles works through the foundation of social pediatrics to create a whole family and whole community approach to children's health and development. Congratulations. Jim McCorkle from the Twin Cities of Minnesota. Jim is opening college admission and success to all through Admission Possible. Congratulations, Jim. <laughs> Suzanne McKechnie Clark from my neighborhood. <laughs> Suzanne is transforming at risk students into college bound entrepreneurs through her organization, Phil, based right here in the Bay Area. Congratulations. <laughs> Dune Lankard, the first Ashoka fellow from the state of Alaska. <laughs> adapts technology to improve public health. In poor, remote villages, his organization is Salud e Nutrition. Congratulations. <laughs> Andres <laughs> Katie Redford of Earth Rights International in Washington, D.C. Katie holds corporations accountable at home for human rights abuses overseas. Katie is our global fellow. <laughs> Cecilio Solis unites ecotourism enterprises to spur economic development in his native Mexico through Riva. Congratulations, Cecilio. from the 
Motor City. I've always wanted to say that. From Detroit, Michigan, he guides and supports the individuals through incarceration, through social integration, through new creations, community outreach. Joe, thank you. And finally, Harry Wyland through the Media and Policy Center Foundation. Harry is offering citizens the power of media to celebrate and inspire social change. Harry is based in Los Angeles. <laughs> One more time, a huge round of applause for the James Jensen, a founding partner at the show his North American program. James. Good evening. My name is James Jensen with the Genesis Group. Wow, is that fantastic? Or what? I'm just overwhelmed right now. <laughs> Margaret Mead once said, Never doubt that a small group of people, a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. It sounds like a team to me. It sounds like a team of change makers. It sounds like a team that could change the world. You know, team is also an acronym for together. Everyone accomplishes more. Together, everyone accomplishes more. So, now I don't know about you all, but you know, this world changing business, it can be sometimes an uphill, arduous, lonely work. But you know, I can't not do it. Is anyone, can anyone out there identify with that? You fellows, you can't not do it. <clears throat> so, I would like to, right now, take one moment for everyone to stand up and reach out and say hello to those next to you and tell them, man, I'm glad you're on the team. Right now. <laughs>
and the empresarios of impact. A solution. You are the merciful magnets that motivate the human heart. You who vertically integrate and horizontally harmonize. You the resource realigators, leveraging time, talent, and treasure. I mentioned an acronym in the beginning team. I have one more for you. VIP. And in this case we have many VIPs here this evening. Which are more than very important people. You are the visioneers, the imagineers, the pioneers, yes indeed the solutioneers. You who fearlessly fight on the front lines of the good fight, relentless warriors in the battle for the greater good. You who work it straight and demonstrate results who live in the light of solution. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to be here with you this evening. And it is with great enthusiasm, profound hope, and high expectation that you, the new 2006 class of Ashoka Fellows, are welcomed into Ashoka, into your fellowship of kindred spirits. You the actors of sacrificial love in action. You the enlightened entrepreneurs. Go. Press on. Persevere. Change the world. Thank you. Tough part of trying to introduce. Um, I don't know how, how you introduce this uh, individual. But, uh, Bill, uh, it's great to see you this evening. And uh, I'm going to hand this off to you so you can also savor this beautiful moment. <laughs> um, I want to add my welcome to the new fellows, to the Global Fellowship, and to the broader community that is so well represented here. Um, because um, our certified anthropologist co-chair Diana Wells, seven years ago, developed the measuring effective system that we use, at the end of five years we look and see what happened. So we can now predict what will happen five years ahead because it's been consistent year after year over the last six years. So this group of fellows, uh, all of them will still be working 100% focused on making their vision happen. 90% will have had independent institutions copy their ideas. And over half will have already changed national policy, which is actually more impressive than it sounds because some don't need to change national policy. So these 18 will each have a huge impact. They'll contribute to our broader community. They'll draw strength from it. And um, so I think that's why we're all here together. We, Everyone here understands that these fellows will make a huge impact, but also we have an opportunity together to make a huge impact. Because the reason we can have this impact is that this is a historic moment that is 
really quite unique. The uh, most, most powerful opening, most needed change period since the agricultural revolution. So I want to look ahead a bit, not only for this group, but for us all, and uh, see if we can see a little bit of the map of where we're headed, uh, and then how we're going to get there. In the time, I can only touch on a couple of things. One is the world where only a tiny elite has had a monopoly on initiative is coming to an end because it doesn't work anymore. We're moving to an everyone a change to make the world. As part of that change, this is the second thing I'll touch on more briefly, business and society that split and now coming back together. These changes and others have such profound implications for all of us uh, in terms of what we do with our lives, what the impact on the institutions we serve are, and certainly on society as a whole. Um, now, so far, what you've seen is what Ashoka has done for 25 years, helping the best ideas people get started, succeed over their lives, and weave together. And I have to ask you to open your minds and think about Ashoka as, yes, we do that. That's the foundation. But at this stage in the development of the world and the field and us, we're doing much more than that. Um, as both survey all our hosts pointed out, we are um, about more than the individuals, even the individuals working together. So as I go through these two major changes that we're headed towards, you'll see some of the new Ashoka, the, the new dimension of here. And uh, the fellows are going to spend several days working together to try to understand how to work this history, how to use this broader community. I only have this little window to give you a, a quick glimpse. Uh, so it's very practically useful. So first of all, everyone a change maker. Where have we been? 12,000 years ago, the agricultural revolution produced a small surplus. A few people moved into Jericho. And they started creating awareness and therefore mystery. And that same small group, more or less, has been in control ever since. They've had a monopoly on initiative. And the faster the world changes, the more powerful you are if you are a change maker. And the more not a citizen you are if you're not a change maker. Uh, this just doesn't work anymore. The world is too big, moving too fast, too complicated. So imagine ahead uh, where we will be. Probably the best way of, of getting a sense of that is asking what organizations really work well. The business is pretty clear. It's the organizations who encourage their people to be change makers, to see changes, to seize them. They create an environment that makes that work. Those are the institutions that succeed and those that don't fail. This is where Ashoka and Google are so close. We want everyone to be a change maker. Internally, we're trying to empower people across the world. That's the model of the organization of the future. And if that works for individual institutions, it works for cities, for ethnic groups. So Laura mentioned the work we're doing with the Iranian community. Um, it works for the world. And so the key question is, how do we get there? Uh, imagine if every human being is like a really smart white blood cell, and as they lived their lives, whenever they saw something that was stuck or could be better, they said to themselves, boy, I know what to do here. This is going to be fun. I know how to work with others. I'm going to fix this problem. We would no longer live in a world where problems were outrunning the solutions. There would be no way that would continue. That would be a world where everyone would really be a full citizen. It would also be a world where we would not ignore the problems, because if you can't solve a problem, why on earth would you want to see it? It just makes you feel sad. But if you're a change maker, you're looking all the time. Imagine everyone looking and being able, in fact, to be a full citizen, a full change maker. Now, that is the world where we're clearly headed. 
We've had a whole series of liberation movements that have tried. The national liberation movements, the civil rights movement, the women's movement. But they've pretty much all ended um, with an elite being in charge. Nayari, uh, leader in Tanzania, bemoaned the fact that the Benzini tribe had succeeded the British, i.e. the people who drove Mercedes Benzes. Um, somehow we haven't been able to get beyond that. But when we look at the work of the fellows, and with a push from Pierre Omijar, we come to understand that there's a real bottleneck here. And that is that unless young people are powerful as young people, unless they ride the bicycle of a very complicated skills you can't get by concept, you've got to practice, empathy, teamwork, leadership, they can't emerge as an adult change maker. And so they emerge with a definition that doesn't give them that, and they don't have the skills to do that. And so Ashoka, with our partners, is launching a worldwide movement. We've been working on it for 10 years, youth venture, um, a civil rights and women's movement so that every young person will be powerful as a young person so they can be a full adult change maker. Now imagine if in 15, 20 years we have 20% of the people in this country and around the world who are change makers. It's no longer the 40 families rotating with the Cadillos that have had Latin America trapped for so many centuries. This is a radically different world. However important each of the individual solutions we have is, they all have a half-life, and that half-life is getting shorter and shorter. The one big change that has no half-life is expanding from the 40 families or the 400 families, or maybe the 1%, to 20% in 15 years, and then it's easy to get to the 50, 70, and everyone to change here. But that is the most profound change since the agricultural revolution, and it's happening now. But well, young people are key. Social entrepreneurs and business entrepreneurs play another key role. Why did business get so far ahead? Because it was an everyone to change to make the world. Anyone with a better idea that could implement it, they would gain market share and people would think it would be great. Uh, now we have social entrepreneurs. And every social entrepreneur has an idea. Think about it. Any, envisage any community. The social entrepreneur comes with any of these new ideas and it upsets the existing way of doing things. At the same time, the entrepreneur cannot succeed unless they get a community after community after community, people to stand up and say, I'm going to take this idea and I'm going to run with it. I'm going to be a change maker in this local community. So each one of these fellows is a mass recruiter of change makers. They're a role model, the people they recruit are local role models. If you combine these two things, you take away the bottleneck and you have this growing movement of mass recruiters of local change makers, we're well on the way to 20%. So that's the first glimpse going forward. I'm going to be much quicker on the second. Uh, business and society split. People like one another, wear different clothing, etc., etc. This is not very practical. Every human need has been served by a business system, a social system that haven't talked to one another for centuries. Uh, this is really, when you start to think about it, quite crazy. Uh, but and just to give you a sense, we have in Shoka 21 programs that, in whole or part, are designed to help the reintegration of these two halves. For example, uh, the cutting edge. Some of the people you've seen from Google here, the business entrepreneurs and the top social entrepreneurs, they are the same people. They have the same spirits. Laura's explaining it very clearly. Uh, of course, these are the right people to work together to build the new institutions that will be cross institutions, that will re knit them together. We can speed that process up. Uh, through something called primary value chain work. So we take these two systems and we put them together. You take the best that the social sector has to offer, lower costs, understanding of these clients, and a better ability to deal with them, with the strengths that business has, and all of a sudden you can do a much better job of serving the clients. And everyone's making much more money and it's, it's a big win for everyone. We're doing this now in multiple industries. 
And soon we're going to hear people talking about hybrid business social value added chains. That's, a, that's going to be a radical change in the environment. Uh, we have to have uh, new financial systems. We are stuck at the moment. Well, we're working, Shoki is working with one of the five biggest financial institutions in the world to help them see how to enter this market. And we hope to work with one or two others. If we can get the 10% of the population that works in the finance industry working on bringing a new financial system to bear, that's going to make a big difference. Uh, and I just mentioned here again, Google, OHR, the Skull, these are all people who are working at that frontier, imagining and developing new approaches that cross the old boundary lines. So there's a way of entrepreneurship beginning, and we hope to contribute to that. But we're not there yet. Uh, the sectors haven't come together. No one is putting $15 billion into angel investing for social entrepreneurs, let alone $70 billion into venture capital, or whatever it is this year. So there's still need. Uh, for us to recognize that during the transition we have to serve somewhat differently. But where we're headed is to get the things back together. Now, there are many more changes. The most important thing I think, uh, no one would be here if we didn't want to be a part of this major time of historic change, if we didn't sense it. The greatest gift the fellows can give us and that we can give one another is to give one another permission to do what the fellows are doing. Everyone here can see problems, the world's income distribution, the environment problem, the fact that there's nothing viable even remotely to protect the world financial system at the moment. Anyone here can make the list. You can also give yourself permission, just as these fellows have, to be a part of finding the answer. And I, that's, and we're so grateful to you all for, in fact, doing that. We are privileged to live at this moment in history where we have the opportunity to fix it and we don't we're in big trouble. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Believe it or not, this concludes our program this evening. We want to thank you all again for coming out uh, and welcome these fellows into the Global Fellowship. We also want to encourage you now when you go home to uh, connect to your dreams, your passions, your desires to have the world that you would want to be in, that you want your children to be in. And when you wake up tomorrow morning, Think about a show. <laughs> <laughs>